hey guys welcome back to the channel i'm so excited for today's video it is a video that has been largely requested i feel like this is one of the videos that almost every student on this that follows this channel have asked me cost of living in the uk how to budget as a student like basically you all have been in my dms in my comment section asking about cost of living and recently i put out an instagram post asking about the questions or the information that you guys want to know so that i can make this video and most of the questions i received was about cost of living so i'm finally here for you guys <laughs> you know that whatever you guys always ask for i try to give it to you that's what this video is going to be about i have a note here so please if you see me looking down just know that it's because of the note i have to be looking i don't want to miss anything because this video is very very important like you need to know how much you're going to spend you need to know how much it's going to cost you to be a student here in the uk if you're new here my name is kiss kiss welcome to my channel and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back as usual do well to share this video click the like button and drop a comment let me know that this video is helpful to you if you have any questions drop it also in the comment section the only way i know that this video is helpful to you is if you drop a comment saying thank you or you know just expressing the information that you have gotten in this video how helpful it has been or sharing this video to someone who needs it or liking this video that is the only way i will know that my effort has not been in vain also i must say that our channel is now monetized thank you so much for all of you who have been watching and supporting us do well to watch the advertisements that's the way that we can make money as creators so the only way you can support me out there for giving you valuable content is by watching the ad so please don't skip the ad don't skip the ad okay all right so let's just get right into the video when it has to do with budgeting or cost of living you would agree with me that it varies per person and per city what am i saying for instance i live here in london i am a student and my cost of living would vary with another student who lives in london and even in my same accommodation the same thing with you in nigeria if you're in nigeria watching me or if you're in us watching me or kenya depending on wherever you're watching me right now definitely your cost of living would be different from another person's cost of living based on their lifestyle and their manner of expenses their, your cost of living would be different so taking that into consideration i'm just going to highlight to you guys the things you are definitely going to spend money on and the things that you should put in your mind or have in your mind as you are coming so i'm just going to give you like the list not like the least amount of money that you should spend for specific things but a guide so the disclaimer here is that whatever information i'm going to share here is from my personal experience i'm not a financial expert i am not an expert advisor on budgeting but i'm just going to use my experience to you know give you this information to guide you okay now that that's been out of the way we're going to talk about your accommodation your transportation your food your clothing your you know the fun experiences you know everything then we're also going to talk about how to save money as a student in uk so basically this video is packed is so well packed information i'm even scared i feel like i'm going to have to divide this video into two if it becomes so long so just do well to stay tuned you know get your notes part ready you start writing take down the information that i'm gonna share and if you're new here you're welcome do well to join the family subscribe to the i'm just going to pause and wait for you to subscribe when you're done subscribing let me know and then we will start this video okay now the most expensive cost i must say that students in general in the uk complain about is cost of accommodation accommodation is basically the you know the one thing that is going to take a chunk of money from your pocket if you live in london then it is a double problem because other cities are relatively cheaper than london accommodations for instance the amount that i pay for my accommodation i've already showed you guys a tour of my accommodation i've told you how I, how much i pay for it that amount some people outside london could pay like half of what i am spending so be rest assured that the most expensive bill for you 
is your accommodation if you are in london your accommodation no matter what it is could begin from 500 pounds up until like 1200 pounds depending on where you are living i stay in a shared apartment in a in a school university accommodation i share you know my flats share the kitchen i stay in such an apartment a shared apartment and i pay about 650 pounds that is like one of the cheapest accommodations that i saw one of the cheapest student accommodations in london the other the ones that you will find that are cheaper than mine are the ones that you would have to share your bedroom with two or three people for instance you see these accommodations that there are two beds in a room those are the only accommodations that are cheaper than maybe 500 600 in a month but if you're living outside london you're probably going to find accommodations from 250 to 300 pounds per month i made a video also showing an accommodation tour where my friend is staying at sheffield that accommodation was less than 400 pounds per month and is very comfortable it's also a student accommodation just like mine i think the only difference is mine is a bit more spacious than that place but in fact that room was in suite and in suite apartment less than 400 pounds sometimes i ask myself who asked me to come to london you know but also looking back i appreciate the fact that i chose my university and i just love being in london like london is a place to be but when you think about the expenses that london carries it is just outrageous like why am i paying double of what other people are paying outside london my colleagues who are outside london are saving more money than myself because by the time i pay 650 700 for my accommodation then half of my money is gone and you know what a lot of my colleagues are actually paying more money than what i pay some of them are paying 800 i know an accommodation that the person is paying 1000 it is also a student accommodation it's also very comfortable and beautiful so depending on how comfortable you want to be for me i must say that my accommodation is comfortable although i share kitchen with six other flatmates of mine it's okay it's comfortable for me i didn't come to london to live in luxury <laughs> So it depends on you. If you say that oh, you, you you want to live a baby girl, a baby boy life, you want to live in the best of the places. Location also matters. I live in East London. If you're living at Central London, be rest assured you're gonna pay more than what I'm paying, even if your accommodation is smaller than mine. So the what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that the cost of accommodation is the single most expensive you know bill you have to foot when you are in uk so if you want to save money first of all start by choosing an accommodation that is not so expensive if you're living in if you want to come to london please and please if your accommodation is between 500 and 800 is fine when i see people who are you know scholarship recipients taking accommodations above 800 i just feel like it's outrageous except you have another source of income regular steady source of income that you are going to be making and i don't like people making decisions based on the fact that they are going to get jobs you know getting a part-time job as a student is good first of all you're only restricted to working for 20 hours a week because you have a tier 4 visa as a student and i don't like it when you feel like oh i'm going to apply for jobs so i'm going to do part-time jobs to augment for my living do you know when you're going to get the job do you know how your coursework is going to be for me i worked but i didn't work immediately so imagine the, if i had taken an accommodation that is way outrageous more than my budget i wouldn't have enough money to take care of myself in the following other ways that i'm going to talk about so in essence what am i saying your accommodation could range between 250 pounds to 1000 pounds in uk depending on your location okay i think 1000 is outrageous but for me i am comfortably living in an accommodation that is 650 pounds a month and then if you stay in a private apartment private homes maybe a house share a flat share you can find those ones cheaper can find them for 500 pounds 
400 pounds a month depending on the location as well so that is it for accommodation the next thing that will take money from your pocket is transportation okay the cost of transportation in uk is not so expensive so i must say that for trains a stop is is about two pounds 50 pence like that's the average it could be cheaper it could be more expensive but the average cost of one train um ticket like one train ticket is about two pounds 50 pence the average cost of a bus shuttle is one pound 50 pence okay so if you're taking the bus to and fro the same distance could cost you about three pounds if you're taking the train to and fro the same distance could cost you about five pounds but i know that in cities outside london the transportation is a bit cheaper you know because um when i went to sheffield their bus shuttle for students was one pound okay as long as you show that you are a student and you flaunt your student id then they get one pound from you also the cost of the bus shuttle may not be as expensive as up to like one pound 50 pence in other cities things like uber a 15 to 20 minutes distance can cost you like 15 pounds 10 to 15 pounds okay and you don't take uber every time you only take uber on occasional basis this is why i advise people to get accommodation where the bus stop is a walking distance from their place the train station is a walking distance from their place so that traveling with public transportation is convenient for you like other cities uber is also cheaper than it is in london my friend in warwick says she takes uber for like five pounds to ten pounds whereas in london your Uber could be between 10 to 20 pounds, depending on where you're going. But I feel like the cost of our transportation is relatively affordable. Another means of transportation are bikes. There are always bikes in different cities. In London, there are Santander bikes, and it is two pounds per 24 hours. So depending on if you like to use the bike, if you know that you're going to be going to a lot of places and you take two pounds, you ride around town, it's going to save you more than taking the train or the bus so make your decision wherever you're going that's fine so later in this video i'm going to be sharing how you should save money from all of these things how you're going to save money as a student so keep watching do not go away if you want to hear that information if you want to get to know how to save money as a student you have to keep watching this video and do well to give this video a thumbs up let me know that it is helping you in the comment section because if you don't tell me i'm not going to know and i'm not going to be motivated to do more okay because at the moment i'm actually writing my dissertation it is very hectic i had to take out time to make this video because i feel like I am indebted to you guys i owe you guys this information it is better for you guys to know and plan ahead than for you guys to come and they say oh couscous did not tell us oh i am sorry that's why i'm doing this for you guys so the only other way you can show your appreciation is by liking this video is by dropping a comment below and also sharing this video to people so that this channel can continue to grow okay <laughs> so let us talk about food okay we know we don't we cannot survive without food so the cost of food in uk for me i would say is reasonable it's not outrageous okay depending on the kind of person you are are you the type of person that loves to make your own meals or do you like to eat out if you like to eat out be rest assured you're going to spend more money than somebody who loves to cook i love to cook maybe not because oh i don't like to eat out it's just because that's the best way i can save money i love to cook so ever since i came to uk i cook my meals i eat out some days but i cook most of the time when you're buying raw food when you're buying you know uncooked food it is cheaper than when you're buying cooked food and there are also different kind of fast food that you can buy for cheap amounts from the stores from the malls you can also stock i would say that if you're cooking somebody like me i can go out and buy groceries for about 50 between 50 to 100 pounds and that would last me for a month usually i don't i shop like i shop groceries like twice a month every two weeks and maybe if i go out i can buy food for like 30 pounds in african stores and then when i go to the supermarkets or to the stores i buy like um groceries for another 30 or 25 pounds putting together that's about 50 pounds and and maybe after two weeks i go back i spend relatively the same amount but i must say that some months 
are more expensive than others because you find out that you have run out of you know lots of groceries and you have to stock up so on a normal day if in this month you are buying a lot of groceries you're buying lots of lots of food in in packages that you know that you're not going to finish you're relatively going to spend more that month and maybe the next month you still have a lot of the things you bought it means you're going to spend less there are some people who spend up to 300 pounds for groceries grocery shopping but i cannot in my mind tell you that i have spent 300 pounds on groceries i will not be truthful to you see the thing is whatever information i share here is based on my experience and i also said that your expenses um your expenses will be determined by your, your lifestyle your way of living and your man manner in which you spend your money your lifestyle so if you love to shop a lot you know i noticed that when i came earlier between September and December, I used to shop a lot. I'll go to stores, I'll buy this, buy that, buy that. Then I'll stock up for like two weeks. And by the time I get back, these things have expired. I don't get to eat so much, you know. I don't eat a lot. So by the time I check, these things are expired. I have to keep throwing them away. I have to learn my lesson, you know, because why waste money like that? Why waste food? When I notice that I necessarily don't eat all these things, I, I cut down like 50% of the way I shop for groceries. I had to cut it down. So for me, I would say that 100 to 150 pounds is enough for me for grocery shopping in a month. And then if I say 50 pa about 50 pounds for transportation, that, that's if I have been going out maybe four days a week. Because if you're not going out up to four days a week, why are you spending up to 50 pounds a month? Well, where are you going to? <laughs> where are you going to? Why are you always walking around? <laughs> because if you are someone that maybe your accommodation is a walking distance to school, or you only have to travel to school three times a week, uh, and then like for me, where I live, I walk to the stores. I walk to the stores, I walk to the train station, so I cut down on my transportation. So why are you spending like why are you spending more than 50 pounds a month in, in transportation? Except you are traveling outside the city. If you're doing intercity travel, yes, you're gonna spend more money. But if you are within the city, you know, you shouldn't spend more than 50, like for real, guys, you should not spend more than 50 pounds, except you're using Uber. If you're using Uber, of course, even one trip can cost you that much. But if you're not using Uber, you don't have any business spending more than 50 pounds a month. But I don't, I cannot tell you what to do. Is your money, is your life. Please be happy. Do what makes you happy. Let all of us be happy, okay? So that is it for food. Now, let me talk about restaurant, like eating out, okay? Eating out depends on the place you visit, okay? The place you decide to go to. For me and my friends here in London, whenever we want to go out, the first thing you hear somebody say is, okay, when somebody says, guys, I, I feel like this place is so lovely, let's go. The first thing you hear someone say is, how much? <laughs> because if I am eating out and it costs me more than 20 pounds at a sitting for my food and drinks, for me, I don't know about you, but I think it is a bit on the high side, okay? Usually, I like places that I can eat within 12 to 15 pounds for a meal, and then I can see drinks between 5, 7, 8 pounds, okay? So that if you're eating a meal and you're taking one drink, then between 20 to 25 pounds is enough for you. The only time I think I have gone out and I've spent like 35 pounds on food was i think just twice which i planned ahead of time i gave myself like two like six weeks notice i planned so that it did not really drastically affect my budget so guys it depends on your budgeting planning have a budget in mind i know that when you arrive settling in it will be a bit more difficult to have a specific budget but after settling in after two three months you already now know the kind of expenses you you expect to make in a month how much can you afford to eat out how much can you afford to go out or buy tickets for fun you know things like that because most times if you're going to the cinema you buy tickets if you're going to the museum you buy tickets you will spend money on those things so while you are budgeting for your accommodation, your transportation, your food, you also have to budget for eating out and having fun and having experiences because those are the things that make up your lifestyle or your that make up your time as a student in London. So what am I going to say? In essence, I'm going to say if you love to cook, then if you love to cook, between 100 to 150 pounds is good for you to buy food stuff, 
if it's too much 200 pounds is good for you to buy food stuff that's if you decide to what are you eating in life <laughs> if you decide to buy expensive things maybe you're buying salmon you are buying really expensive food items but if you are buying chicken and mackerel you know what is there those ones are a bit affordable okay so it's something that you can do in a month and then if you want to eat out let's say you eat out every weekend or you you go out every weekend then 100 to 150 pounds should also take care of that so in essence with transportation excluding your accommodation i feel like between 300 to 500 pounds is a reasonable budget for you i hope that this video has been of help to you and do well to support this channel like i said watch the ads drop a comment do not leave don't sign out without dropping a comment don't i'm i'm telling you now don't sign out without dropping a comment have you dropped a comment here even if you think that it is not important whatever i have said you already know but you know that it will be of help to other people if you're not yet subscribed come on do well to subscribe okay and then i'll catch you guys in my next video bye